In today's Rike tutorial, I will show you everything needed to know to successfully use Rike to streamline your workflows, use it as a project management tool and much more. To get started, simply just head over to Rike.com. I will also leave you a link for this down below. We are just going to get started with a free Rike account, so we can either just put in our email or we can just move forward with Google, which is what I'm going to do. You will then have to get started by putting in some simple details like your work email as well as company name. And then you will have to go through some simple questions. Now make sure to just go through this. Actually it doesn't really matter too much what you are going to put in right here. So I will actually just skip through this as we are going to start from scratch later on. So now this is going to prepare our workspace and now we are going to be redirected onto the actual Rike dashboard. So to get started, I'm actually going to delete the default Rike project, which has been created. So I'm just going to delete this and rather we are going to get started from scratch. Now on the left, you are going to see all of the different features. You are going to see the spaces and so on. And basically inside these spaces, we then do have the space settings. So these would be the general settings of your whole Rike space. Now a space essentially is just a big view of all of your projects, to-do lists, and so on and inside here you can then actually go through all of the workflows automations and so on we are also going to get into that in just a second and then we can see the overall dashboard which is going to show us an overview of all of the stats inside our Rike projects so let's actually create a project right now I'm just going to move forward by naming this marketing apartment and now we have created our project now to get started we are going to create a simple task and i'm just going to name this leads outreach so as you can see now this has been created by default this has been assigned to the new status and we are going to have some fields available right here this would be the assignee start date due date as well as the impact now essentially these are going to be the default parameters which have been set by default however you can actually also further customize this you can just press on plus right here and you can then add any of these pre-made fields however you can actually also create a custom field right here so i'm just going to name this um, amount of people and this is just an example obviously and now the type for this obviously would be number and now we are going to have basically a custom field where we can then put in how many people are going to be needed how many people basically this is just an example you can use these custom fields to put in all sorts of different data points onto your tasks now in this least outreach test right here by opening it we are also going to have a subscription we can also add files add dependencies as well as sub items so these sub items are essentially just sub tests so for example i'm going to make one sub task right here uh, which is going to say scrap lead data and now this has been created. And now if we are going to actually see this right here, we can click on this arrow. And now this is going to collapse and we can see that subtask right here on the view. Now we can then go ahead and actually assign the different kind of people who are going to work on this. Now to actually invite your whole team, you will just have to click on share right here. And you will then have the option to actually copy the link for your workspace. And you can then actually invite new people. Now, essentially on Rike, you are going to have three different ways of viewing your projects, viewing your tasks. This would be the table view, first of all, which you can see right here. This would just be your normal overview of all of the tasks. However, you are also going to see the Gantt chart right here. This is going to be, let's wait for this to load up. This is just going to be essentially a calendar. I like to name it that way. And right here, you are then going to see all of the different timelines uh, which are going to be needed for the test. So if you, for example, are going to set the due date to uh, tomorrow and the start date, uh, okay, I guess let's, let's add the due date to um, Monday next week and the start date to tomorrow, we can now actually see this on the Gantt chart and we can now see a visual overview of our calendar. Obviously, if you have tons of different tasks, this is a great way of displaying that and this is just kind of a good way of keeping an overview of everything. 
Now you can actually also access the analytics tab right here. This is then just going to give you the analytics of your project. So right here, you can change the view of this. You can actually change the pie chart. You can see how many tasks are active, how many tasks are overdue. You can actually even further go into all of the stats. Obviously, as I just have added two tasks, this isn't really interesting, but trust me, if you do have a lot of different projects, a lot of different tasks, apartments, and so on, this really can be a great way of actually looking at all of the data. And then we are actually also going to have the option to see a board view. So this kind of is going to be just a Kanban view where you can then actually drag your different kind of um, tasks around. Now, I think this is a co okay way of doing project management. Don't get me wrong. However, I think the table view or the gun chart is a more better way essentially. And you're then actually also going to get a normal calendar view, uh, which is also pretty useful. However, I do prefer the Gantt chart as right here, we are just going to have way more data and this is going to give us a better overview. Of course, we can actually also um, basically customize each of these charts by using the settings icon right here and we can then actually select all of the different things which we do want to add onto our tasks, onto our chart and so on. Now, essentially, Rike doesn't only offer project management, they also do offer a lot of automation features. And to access these, you will just have to head over two automations right here. And now, as you can see, by default, we are going to have two automations set up. So this one, first of all, would be when the due date is going to be within one day, then they are going to automatically add a comment and mention the followers and the SNEs. This is just a great way of keeping up with due tasks. And then the second one, one is going to be when the due date is within one day then this is going to okay i guess this is going to be the same one however the first one is just going to apply to a task and then the second one to a project now essentially we can then actually also add other rules I would recommend you to first of all just go through all of the templates which they have created because most of the time these are going to be perfectly fine to get started with. So we can for example say that when a new item is created we can automatically assign a new um, basically SNE to this. So let's just say that this is going to apply to the tests and then when a new item is created we can change the SNE to let's just for example say that we are going to change the SNE to the user who triggered the rule. So so if we're now going to save this and if we're now going to create this, let's actually look at this. I'm going to uh, create a new task right now. So I'm just going to name this test task. And now we can see that automatically I've been added as the SNE. Obviously, you can even further customize these automations, but essentially these are just a great way of streamlining um, your whole workflows as these can basically save you quite a lot of time. And then basically within your space views, if you're going to head over to the settings, you also do have workflows right here. So right here, we can actually see the active workflows. These would be new, planned, in progress, as well as review, and then the completed ones. So this would be just completed. Now you can actually customize these uh, with the text, with the color and so on. You can actually also allow manual transitions to following a statuses only. So if you, for example, are going to say, okay, if something is new, this only can be uh, actually transitioned to the plan status, then you would have to select that right here. So if we are going to set this up like this, we can only drag the new item onto plant and nothing else. And once we are going to click on the task, we are going to once again have the description right here. However, we can also see an overview and basically a chat for this exact item where we can then mention certain people inside the workspace. And this is just also a great way of reminding people of sending information and so on. Now, that's basically it. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.